Turns out the dwarves decided to party right when I started recording this episode. Hello everybody and welcome back to another community fortress. This fortress was sent in by Nietzsche and it goes by the name of Coven Armors. Now this is an interesting one and the reason it's an interesting one is because it's very high population. But it's also an interesting one because it's tiny. It's a one by one fort. So before I dive in, I just wanted to say if you'd like to send in a fortress room and have a look at on the show, you can do that via my Discord server. There is a link down in the description of this video. In that Discord server, there is a room called DF Design Contests and DF Save Sharing. If you'd like to share a fortress room and have a look at, you can do that in the DF Save Sharing room. The DF Design Contests room is for occasional contests that we have for design and other neat dwarf fortress things. Now, I would just like to note that uh, I had to skip a couple of forts in the uh, order in the save sharing room because I couldn't load them due to mods. So if you're using a bunch of mods, please include your mods folder because it's unlikely I'll be able to load it, apparently. Again, I'm having issues. I'm sorry. It's not always perfect. But, like I said, this is a tiny fortress with a population of 350. Let's see how it runs before we do anything. I unpause the game and it runs at a solid 95 frames per second. You can see that we have a lovely little fountain here. Now Nietzsche has sent in fortresses for us to have a look at before, so I expect some awesome stuff here. Uh, right off the bat, this little uh, <laughs> this little fountain is real cool. Obviously messing around with liquids because you know you got frames to spare. And because it's a single tile fort, uh, we can kind of just look at it in one screen, so that's how we're gonna do this. Uh, we are just gonna slowly move down through the fortress as the parties end. Uh, so as we begin moving down, you can see that there is a few spaces here. So this is a greenhouse, and then there's trading entrance here. Uh, obviously, when enemies arrive on the map, you can just seal this off, and then central staircase, of course. Uh, so we're going to start moving down. Over here on the right, we can see that we have lava. Magma has come up from, from the magma sea. We've got our first layer of bedrooms here, as well as uh, water supply for that pump, I assume. Yes, water supply for that pump. So water comes from over here and goes over to this, up into the fountain. And then as we move down through... Uh, you can see that we've hit the, well, not the first cavern layer, but there's an area that was full of water at one point, which is uh, a old uh, ore vein, which now is where they grow their uh, resources. And you can also see down here that we have a barracks, uh, as well as an area designated as a water source, and of course, animal training. We keep moving down. We have a very large temple uh, dedicated to no particular deity with all visitors welcome. A whole bunch of dwarves hanging out here. Look at all of them. There's so many of them. <laughs> And this is just going to continue because there's 350 dwarves in this fort. Uh, this is, of course, the Eater of Banners. I don't know why you're eating flags, but it is a large tavern for this fortress. And, uh, of course, there is multiple locations where water is being dribbled down. The water is coming uh, from this here stairway, uh, which is uh, falling, I guess, down. Yeah, it's coming di from down here in the fountain, uh, down, down through this. Uh, then down over to here, and then down through this waterway, and then in through the tavern. A little bit of a dangerous way of building a mist generator for this type of fort, but looks lovely all, together, all the same. Uh, and then as we move down, there's more of this. I gotta say, I really, really appreciate their use of the old ore veins uh, for... Uh, the bedrooms. I, I think that that's a really nice way of doing bedrooms. And this is a really cool little spiral stairway over here, so or ramp set up here. So this little spiral ramp kind of goes down past these bedroom layers and is kind of, I guess, used as the main access point for large portions of this fort. Uh, right here we have another little pen pasture, as well as a tiny little library, and so many other little rooms. Such a quaint little fort. Uh, a big old thing for memoriams for dwarves that didn't make it through the fight uh, of building this fort, I suppose. Down here is a whole pile of wool, as well as a very large clothing industry. And uh, over here we have more bedrooms and, and then a couple more tombs down at the bottom. I love that little spiral uh, rampway. It looks so cool just watching the dwarves go up and down. Uh, and then down over here we have a rather large uh, tomb dedicated to their duchess. And we can keep moving down and keep moving down. This is a capital, so we may hit spoilers by the bottom. I actually kind of, normally I, I kind of go through the forts before I show them on this show, but in this one I'm just kind of going blind, uh, I guess because my username needs to fit sometimes. Then there's a lot of liquids and stuff going on down here. I'm not totally sure what's happening, but long story short, there's water everywhere, and most of our livestock live down here. The dwarves seem to kind of come and go from this area pretty frequently. Uh, there's a lot more water flowing over here as well, um, and it's just kind of flowing down from the looks of things. Uh, we've got larger bedrooms for this deeper area. It looks lovely. And we're down to just the central staircase here. I do like that they've got this area here marked off in case they need to do more. I love the way these these bedrooms look. These look awesome. Just making use of all of this space as well as old spaces that the dwarves dug out anyway. It's just a really, really nice look. And then we continue moving down. And there's more bedrooms, I assume. Yeah. And then 
uh, a, a little office set up over here, which isn't actually dedicated to anybody. And then we hit the first cavern layer. Uh, down in the cavern layer here, there's a lot of mud and some elk birds. A whole bunch of elk birds. I'm not seeing any forgotten beasts. Usually when I see these micro forts, there's always like a dozen dead forgotten beasts in the middle of it. Um, we keep moving down. Some people describe Dwarf Fortress as like watching an anthill. I think forts like this are particularly anthill-esque. Uh, right here we have a very large amount of water, which I'm assuming is coming from that uh, those upper layers, which is dump pouring through here, which is powering... Uh, 6,000 power, that is an absurdly large amount of power, into this lovely deep cavern layer, uh, which the dwarves have, of course, dug through, and shoutouts to the pecan wood splint made by Bessmer. Uh, and we continue to move down, and there's this little waterfall here. Of course, you know, we're running at basically a, a flat 100 frames per second on this Ryzen 7, and uh, it falls down onto a statue. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and then there's this little space down here, which I'm assuming is a temp... Nope! Tavern, the Olive of Work. I like that. I like that tavern name. It's a good tavern name. We continue moving down, and there's almost another fountain down here. This cavern's been flooded, but it does flow off the map down in the bottom there, so it can't can endlessly flood. And then we can keep moving down to the third cavern layer, which is sealed off, and uh, then we can just kind of follow this pump stack all the way down to the Lava Sea. A very simple little fortress, but an aesthetically pleasing one. I always like seeing these micro forts. I need to build one of these at some point. I keep on like pushing back against it because I'm always like, nah, they're kind of boring. Because I do think they're kind of boring to make, but the results often look really cool. So um, I have these very mixed feelings about these forts, shall we say. But I do really like this fountain. I think that's maybe my favorite feature of this particular fort. I think that the fountain is kind of a awesome descript visual of what you can do when you have unlimited frame rate in Dwarf Fortress. And, uh... I'm very curious to see what people start building now that the game runs a lot better on the majority of systems. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I've got more uh, Dwarf Fortress videos than you could reasonably watch in a lifetime. And we're getting close to 100 of these uh, community forts now, so if you'd like to kind of go through the back catalog of previous community forts that have been sent in, I recommend you check it out. Also, if you like the content that I put on this channel, uh, it's, you know, difficult existing as a smaller YouTuber, and uh, the internet uh, has decided that Dwarf Fortress isn't as popular in the summer, so views have been slow. If you want to support this channel directly, the best way to do, to, to do that is just via my Patreon. Two bucks a month gets you into the credits of these videos, and it would help me out tremendously. Thank you very much for watching these videos, and I hope to see you in the next one.